understand the idea of the celestial sphere, first think of the Earth in space. The stars all around us look as if they could be on the inside of a huge distant sphere. Though the stars are really at different distances, this idea of the celestial sphere is very useful for giving positions in the sky. Now imagine you are close to the North Pole. Here, it is like being on a roundabout because the Earth is spinning on its axis once a day. Every day, each star circles all around you and around the point overhead, which is the celestial North Pole. There is, of course, a celestial South Pole as well, and the celestial equator circles the sky halfway between the poles. Positions on the celestial sphere are specified by two coordinates. Declination, like latitude on Earth, is measured in degrees north or south of the equator. Positive declinations are north, negative declinations south. Right ascension, the equivalent of longitude, is measured in hours from a zero line. An hour is 15 degrees. Because you are on the Earth's surface, half of the sky is completely hidden. The Earth gets in the way and creates your horizon. In effect, your personal sky is like a hemispherical dome. Imagine now you move to the Earth's equator. The celestial equator runs from east to west through the zenith, the overhead point. The celestial poles are due north and south on the horizon. The north-south line on the sky through the zenith is called the meridian. At an intermediate latitude, the altitude of the celestial pole in the sky is equal to your latitude on Earth. Some stars are circumpolar and never set. It's sometimes useful to know a star's altitude, its height above the horizon, and its azimuth, its compass direction. Azimuth is measured round the horizon from north, but as the stars move, their altitude and azimuth constantly change.